All right, now we are going to talk about my favorite part of the mixer, which is the fat channel. Um, fat channel is a section of the mixer where um, all you uh, audio geeks out there can get in and tweak to your heart's content all kinds of settings for each and every channel, um, inputs and outputs. And so I'm going to give you an overview and show you how to do that. Uh, we're going to go through this pretty quick, but try to keep up and uh, um, hopefully you learn something. All right, first off, I'm going to show you what, where the fat channel is. When I refer to the fat channel, I'm referring to everything in this blue section on the mixer. Um, that is all referred to as the fat channel. Now, what that section does and what it's affecting is dependent on what channel you selected. Now, um, on this mixer, let me back up a little bit, everywhere you see a blue blinking light, those are inputs or outputs that you can select to then make adjustments to those inputs or outputs in the fat channel. So let's just uh, get started on one channel and we'll walk through what you can do. Alright, so we're going to select channel 8. And let's get started and we'll work left to right. First thing you'll see here is a high pass filter. That light's on, the high pass filter is turned on. If it's not, the high pass filter is not on. Um, let's turn it on. Now what a high pass filter does is um, it cuts off frequencies that are lower than what you select set the setting to. Now on the left here of this bar you'll see different frequencies. The top is 1 kilohertz, the bottom is 24 hertz. And um, 24 hertz is really really low bass. Um, the bass that you hear booming in cars when they go by is uh, going to be somewhere between 75 hertz and 100 hertz. Um, that's the range where you get really loud um, booming bass. This is the lower bass that makes you feel like you're going to throw up if it hits you hard enough. Um, and up here is uh, more mid-range frequencies, low mids. Um, so what this, this knob does, lets you select the frequency that, and choose that below the frequency you select, the mixer is going to cut all the low frequencies below that setting out of that channel sound. Um, what this is helpful for is one with microphones, you don't need microphones to be picking up uh, really low bass, say somebody's singing, especially a female vocalist or male vocalist, you don't need to be picking up bass frequencies. All these bass frequencies are going to do is uh, be picking up feedback from say your subwoofer or other things. So we're going to set, the way we're going to set our high pass filter is we're going to be listening to that channel and we're going to keep turning up the high pass filter until we reach the point where it starts affecting how the sound of that channel is. So say this is a uh, acoustic guitar or a vocal, we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to turn it up until we reach the point that suddenly that instrument starts sounding different. Once it starts sounding different, we're then going to back it down slowly until we reach the point that um, this isn't affecting that instrument. The other thing this is really helpful for is uh, when miking dr an acoustic drum set. Um, like your overhead mics that you're miking your cymbals with. Um, obviously your cymbals are high frequency, but you don't want to be picking up the whole s drum set through your cymbal mics. So we're going to set the high pass filter pretty high. You're going to listen until, um, you're going to turn this up until uh, the toms and your kick and everything else aren't coming through those cymbal mics and only your cymbals are. So that's what a high pass filter is. Pretty cool, pretty helpful. Um, we also have, let's see next here, I'll go to the digital out button. This has to do when you're recording to the computer uh, through FireWire. If this is off, then what this is going to, this is what, what this is telling the mixer to do is to send the signal, a pure signal that right directly from the microphone into the computer. So it comes in, you set the gain, goes right to the computer. If this is on, it says post, e post EQ and dynamics. If that's on, the signal going to the computer is going to be coming in through the gain and it's going to be going in through all these settings that you adjusted to, to uh, optimize the sound before it goes to the computer to be recorded. Now, most of the time you're going to want to have this on. Um, the only time you wouldn't want to have this on is if you plan to do a lot of mixing and adjusting and EQing separately um, in a studio setting or whatever at home remixing that recording but if you want to 
have that recording the easiest to deal with um, and not do a lot to it, you're going to want this EQ and Dynamics button on, the digital out button. Next up we have a gate, and uh, what a gate does is literally think about, about it like a children's gate, like the ones you set up to keep your kids out of uh, the kitchen while you're making dinner and keep them all uh, trapped in the living room like a zoo. Uh, that's the way this is going to work. Um, but think about the gate height as being loudness levels. So if we turn this down here, it's a short gate, and what this is meant to do is to keep out sounds that aren't loud enough to go over your gate. So if we set the level low here, um, sounds coming through that mic don't have to be too loud to be let through. If we turn it up, sounds coming through that mic have to be louder to get let through. Um, so, so think about it this way. If we have uh, one instance this is helpful for is electric guitar amps. Everybody knows electric guitar amps hum and buzz as soon as you turn them on whether or not you're playing. So what I'm going to do is over here you'll see select channel gain reduction. This is a uh, channel we're working on, this is how much the board is automatically turning down that channel. Now you'll notice that as I turn this knob down, that gain reduction light goes away. When I turn it back up, the gain reduction light comes on. Now when your guitar amp is on but the person is not playing, you're going to start with that gain knob all the way down the gate knob all the way down and you're going to turn that gate knob up until that gain reduction light comes all the way down. And what that's going to do is essentially mute the buzz coming from that amp. You're going to hear that that channel is basically going to shut off. But as soon as that guitar starts playing, it's going to make the signal coming in louder than the amount you set the gate at and it's going to open up that gate, it's going to turn off the gain reduction when he starts playing, and it's going to let the signal come through for his channel. So as soon as he plays, you'll have sound, but when he doesn't play, you won't get that buzz and it'll shut off. It's also important when you're miking drums, like I said, separate drum mics, um, you're going to set your gate so that it doesn't let that sound from that mic come through until the, that drum you had miked is hit. Um, you don't want sound coming through your uh, uh, tom mic, you know, when you're hitting your cymbals. So you're going to set it so that um, only when the loudness of your toms, which are right next to those mics, um, allows that gate to open up and let the sound through. Next here is the release time, and that's just setting uh, two seconds at the top, 0 0.05 seconds at the top. That's setting how long the gate stays opened after it's been opened. So we've let, we've let the electric guitarist through when he played. Um, it opened up the gate, let the sound of his guitar come through, and now if we set it at one second, after he, after the level of his guitar falls below the gate level we set, the gate's going to stay open for one second more, and then it's going to close. Um, with this, you can just play around with settings. You don't want it to shut off too, too quick, because uh, it may cut off if he uh, holds out a note and uh, it gets quiet, but it's still barely there. This may cut it off if the release is set too short, but if it's set too long, you're going to get a period of buzz from that amp until it does decide to shut off.